Let's talk about the iPhone 8. So I have some really exciting news to talk about, some really exciting things that I'm going to cover in this video. And you can probably tell that I'm pretty excited for all of this. So this is an iPhone 8 mock-up. So this is based on the actual dimensions for the iPhone 8. So with this we get a general idea of not just how the iPhone 8 is going to look like, so not just design-wise, but also how the iPhone 8 actually feels in the hands. And apart from this iPhone 8 mock-up, I also have a couple of more interesting things that I want to cover at the end of this video regarding the iPhone 8. So as always, grab some popcorn, you'll need quite a lot of popcorn for this video. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Okay, so what exactly is this? Well, this is an iPhone 8 mock-up based on the actual dimensions for the iPhone 8. So this is usually made by case makers so that they uh, get a general idea of how the dimensions, how the iPhone 8 is going to feel in the hand, uh, the actual dimensions, and uh, they will be able to manufacture cases for the iPhone 8 based on this. So dimension-wise, this is based on the schematics uh, for the iPhone 8, some of which we've already seen before. So let's take a closer look at this iPhone 8 mock-up. So the first thing that you can probably see is just how clean this thing looks from the front. There's no home button anymore since it's now fully digital. So essentially just like on the iPhone 7, so the iPhone 7 no longer had a physical home button anymore. Instead, it had a vibration motor beneath, uh, behind the display panel, which basically gave you the impression that you've actually pressed the home button, even though the home button itself was actually fixed. So the same exact thing is going to happen with the iPhone 8. The only difference is that now you, you will no longer have an actual area for the home button. Instead, that would be uh, underneath the display. And that's pretty much all we get on the front. So just a large 5.8 inches, by the way, display. Now, in case you're wondering, where's the speaker grill, the ambulite sensor, the proximity sensor, and obviously the front facing camera, you cannot really see them on this mock-up, but they would be on that dedicated sensor bar on the top that we've seen in quite a lot of schematics, quite a lot of mock-ups, case renders and actual renders. Now on the back of the iPhone, we have that dual camera module. Now this one actually has a few changes. So the first is obviously the fact that it's vertical, which doesn't really affect picture quality at all, by the way, because the OS will simply just flip the image. So there's no actual downside to having a vertical uh, back facing camera. Oh, and in case you're wondering why the back of the iPhone looks a bit weird, why it's all scratched up, there is actually a sticker here to cover the Apple logo, uh, which I tried really hard to remove and yeah, the, the phone got scratched in the, in the process, so that's why. However, what's interesting here is the fact that the flash is now in the middle instead of being to the right of the dual camera modules and there is a greater distance between the two individual camera modules. Okay, so why would that be? Why has Apple increased the distance between the two camera modules on the iPhone 8? Well, it most likely has to do with 3D depth mapping. So basically the bigger the, dis the distance between two camera modules or two cameras, uh, the better the depth recognition and the depth effect can be. Now, obviously you do need some intersecting pixels uh, between the two images. Otherwise, if the distance is too great, the two images would be completely different images and depth recognition wouldn't be possible at all. Now, in my previous iPhone 8 Leaks and Rumors episode, I talked about how this depth mapping actually works on the iPhone 8 and also why you would need an infrared sensor on the iPhone 8 for measuring the distance between, obviously, the phone and an object. So in case you want to know more about how this 3D camera on the iPhone 8 would work uh, and the infrared sensor and everything, definitely check out this video. But basically, it's most likely going to come the iPhone 8 with an infrared sensor on, on the front and most likely on the back as well. Now, if you take a look on the back on the dual camera module, you can actually see a small, tiny cutout. Now, I think that's most likely the one for the microphone because it would be just way too small to have an infrared sensor there. So I'm not really sure where the infrared sensor would actually be on the back facing camera, but I do think that it's going to be there. Now, taking a look at the sides, on the sides, we don't have anything too special. So these are the sides used in this mock-up are basically the same design style as on the iPhone 7. However, when it comes to the sides on the iPhone 8, they would actually be really similar to the Apple Watch, to uh, the Space Black Apple Watch. So imagine this with the Space Black color from the Apple Watch, uh, rounded edges and also a really smooth transition between the display and the back of the phone. Now, something really interesting that I want to mention is when it comes to the power button. So the power button on this one is so much longer than all the previous iPhone power buttons, which is a bit weird. Now, my guess is that the reason why this power button is so long is because Apple would be including Touch ID into the side button, into the power button of the iPhone 8. So we've actually had a, a lot of reports, a lot of recent reports that are saying that Apple won't be including the fingerprint reader or Touch ID 
uh, under the display assembly just because Apple is having some production issues when it comes to that display tech. So in the end, Apple has basically two options, remove it completely or have it on the side into the power button because all of those, all of those clones, all of those schematics and mockups that we've seen with a Thinkman reader on the back, apparently that's not going to happen, which is some awesome news. Now having a Thinkman reader embedded into the power button wouldn't actually be a first because we are, we've actually had a few phones and we have a few phones that already have this. So if you take a look at the Sony Xperia XZ uh, Premium and the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium, those phones actually have a Thinkman reader into, uh, into the power button. I'm not talking about the US versions. Uh, the XZ Premium, the US version doesn't have that, but yeah, all the other versions uh, do. And this is not the only place where we've seen that long power button. We've actually seen it in pretty much all the iPhone 8 leaked schematics. All the mock-up leaks, even on the clones, and on pretty much all iPhone 8 renders, not even to mention the iPhone 8 cases. Well, let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about this long power button from the iPhone 8? Do you think it's going to be used uh, to include Touch ID, or do you think that it's simply longer because I don't know, because maybe just Apple wanted to make it longer. Maybe it's going to be a dual pressable button so that one side is for launching the camera and one side is for unlocking the phone or locking the phone. Even though I don't think that that's going to be the case because if it was a dual pressable button, they would have simply split the button into two pieces like they've done with the volume button. But let me know in the comments what you guys think about all this. Now, when it comes to the size, just take a look at this. So iPhone 8, 5.8 inches display. And now this is the iPhone 7 Plus with a 5.5 inches display. Just take a look at how much smaller the iPhone 8 is when compared to the iPhone 7 Plus, and it comes with a larger display. Now, that's because the top and the bottom bezels have now been completely removed, especially the bottom one. And now, if we compare this to something like an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 6s or an iPhone 6, the iPhone 8 is not really that much larger. And it comes with a 5.8 inches display from 4.7, which is a massive improvement in what's essentially almost the same form factor. I mean, in the end, the biggest difference between the 4.7 inches iPhone and the iPhone 8 uh, would be, well, the width. Other than that, they're really, really similar in size. Now, if we compare this to something like a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, the S8 Plus is indeed much, much larger. But at the same time, this one comes with a 6.2 inches display versus 5.8 on the iPhone 8. Now, speaking of 5.8 inches displays, the Samsung Galaxy S8, so the regular S8, comes with a 5.8 inches display, so same size as the iPhone 8. I don't really have a regular S8 to compare it with, but here's a rendering by Benjamin Gaskin based on the actual dimensions. And as you can see, the S8 is a bit taller than the iPhone 8, which is, by the way, a bit wider. So in the end, it depends on which aspect ratio you prefer. Okay, so how does the iPhone 8 feel in the hand? Well, holding the iPhone 8 in the hand, it feels, size-wise, I have to say that it feels really really good. So pretty much the perfect size for a large screen phone. I can actually touch all four corners of the display without having to overextend or strain my fingers. Oh, and also don't forget about that sensor bar on the top. So the status bar will also occupy a portion of the top section of the display. So it won't actually go uh, up until the very top of the phone. Now I have something else that's pretty interesting that I want to show you. And that's this iPhone 8 case. So this is how an iPhone 8 case would look like. And even though this is just a case, there are still a couple of interesting things that I want to cover here. So the first one is the cutout for the power button on the right. So this one is still very large and again, it pretty much points towards a possible fingerprint reader embedded into the power button. And then on the back we have that famous vertical cutout for that dual camera module along with the second cutout for the Apple logo. Now in case you're wondering why is there a cutout for the Apple logo, that's just because that, that's how the case was designed. So it doesn't really mean that the fingerprint reader will be embedded into the Apple logo on the back, even though that would actually be a pretty good idea and definitely possible. But I still believe that a fingerprint reader onto the side of the phone, onto the right, would be a much better option. Obviously, the best option would be having it embedded into uh, the display assembly, but that's most likely not going to happen. Oh, and in case you want to get some iPhone 8 cases yourselves, I've included the link for those in the description. Huge shout out, by the way, to Yesgo for sending these over. Uh, and if you use the code, the coupon code in the description, you also get a 10% discount. And they also make some pretty cool looking iPhone 7, iPhone 6S, and iPhone 6 cases. So in case you're interested in these, I left the link for all of these in the description box down below. Oh, and in case you want to see more iPhone 8 coverage, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. And also don't forget to enable notifications 
by simply tapping on that bell icon so that you're notified as soon as I upload a brand new epic video. Oh, and in case you've missed my previous iPhone Alix and Rumors episodes, in those I talked a bit more in depth about the dual camera module, uh, depth effects, wireless charging, Touch ID, and everything in depth in case you want to know more details about that. Again, the link for everything is in the description. Feel free to give this video a like if you have enjoyed it to let me know and also let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the iPhone 8 so far. I mean, when it comes to the iPhone 8, we already know pretty much everything there is. So would you be upgrading to the iPhone 8 even if it's going to be more than a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds in the UK? And also let me know if you're epic enough to make it until the end of this video by saying I was epic enough to make it until the end. But yeah, this was pretty much it for this video. So thank you for watching this video until the end. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in my next one. Son of Tech, signing out. Cheers.